Nazareth, where he had been raised. <laughs> and his, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet, Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he, 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 he found the place, Lord Jesus, there's so much in here. He found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set liberty to them who are captive. Now, I'm going to read back through this again because I think you missed it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news to the poor. Now, poor doesn't mean financially. It means poor in spirit. Somebody say poor in spirit. I'm just trying to help you so you know where to shout. Because if you ever felt poor in spirit, if you ever felt depressed, if you ever felt like you weren't enough, if you ever felt like you didn't have enough to do what God called you to do and be who God called then the good news is Jesus came to heal the broken hearted. Maybe you never had a broken heart. Maybe you never sat there on the phone crying while somebody told you some news you didn't want to hear. Maybe somebody, oh, hear me right here. Maybe somebody who promised you a lifetime never broke that promise to you. And maybe you've never been broken hearted. But if you have been broken hearted, then the good news is for you. To preach deliverance to the captive. Maybe you've never been addicted to nothing. Maybe you never, you, maybe, maybe you, you never tried to quit and tried to quit and tried to quit. And for whatever reason, you couldn't quit. And all of a sudden, the chain breaker showed up and said, The good news is, I'm here for you. Maybe you didn't have a problem quitting it, but your problem was quitting him. The good news is, the chain breaker is here. <laughs> Maybe you never felt blind, felt without purpose. God, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what direction to turn. I don't know. I've been walking the same road. Oh, Jesus. I've been going through the same thing, and it feels like I'm in a cycle somehow. I, I'm, I'm lost in a cycle, and I feel blind. The good news is, the chain breaker came for you. And the last one is, this, this should just catch everybody. The last one is, maybe you never felt tied to anything. He said the people who were bound. You ever just felt tied to something? I'm going to help somebody today. Tied to poverty. Oh, Jesus. Tied to being broke. Oh, Jesus. Tied, tied, tied to a, your social economic system. Have you ever felt tied to something? God said today, the chain breaker is anointed to break those chains. He said, he said, the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to do this. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book. Father, we love you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, break chains today, God. Break chains today. Break chains today. Break chains today, break chains today God. You, you do it. You do it. We, can, we can't do it. You do it. You do it. God, we love you. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You can have your seat. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody serving. Thank you so much. All the teams, I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, boy, the online, 
y'all people who watching online, y'all. Everybody just say hello to our online audience real quick. The online was so good today, I almost came back and just paid these brothers back here. I gotta give y'all some money or something. Oh yeah. My dad's church, they put money on the altar. I'm not telling y'all to do that, but that's what I wanted to do here though. I'm not telling y'all to do that. Unless you feel led by, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> hey, my cousin Jason and his beautiful wife is here. Can y'all, I'm not gonna make them stand up, but can y'all say hello to them? My little baby cousin, yeah, my family over here. God bless y'all, thank y'all for coming out, man. Love y'all. Today, I wanna talk about the chain breaker. Somebody say the chain breaker. Um, y'all can start my clock right now. <laughs> that was y'all time. That worship, that was y'all, it was good, right? I'm just kidding. No, I, I, I'm just kidding. I, I, I really just want to introduce this series. We're going to start a new series today called The Chain Breaker. And in this series, I, I, want you to just, I, I want you to realize the power that comes with the name Jesus. I want you to recognize the power that comes with the name Jesus. Oftentimes, we, we, we say Jesus, we throw his name out there, we use it so much now, we use it in vain oftentimes, and, 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 and really, we, we're missing the power that comes with the name Jesus. The songwriter said, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And now, that, that's a beautiful song, and, but I don't know if y'all know how real it is. Because when Jesus starts speaking this in, e, in Elijah, in, in Isaiah, excuse me, what he is going back to is, a, is another chapter in a book, in the book of Isaiah. And, and in that, Isaiah says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. In that, Isaiah says, and in what Jesus is saying, no, uh, uh, I love you, Isaiah. That was wonderful. It was a good message. But the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, some of you guys don't know where this is in the Bible, and that's fine. That's my job to help you. <laughs> but, it, but, but in Luke chapter 4, it, we just come off of Luke chapter 3. And in Luke chapter 3, something special happens. Jesus goes to see his cousin. Man, that's cool. My cousin's here. Jesus goes to see his cousin. That's so cool. See how God be putting that thing up there? Chauncey, see how God be chopping that thing up? Jesus goes to see his cousin. His cousin is a famous preacher. Is a, is a very famous, very well-known pastor, preacher, teacher. And he, he, is, um, he is baptizing in the Jordan River. In fact, they call him John the Baptist. Man, y'all so church. Y'all know this stuff, man. Y'all been to Sunday school. That's so good. Amen. Jesus goes to see John the Baptist, and we suppose that Jesus has seen John the Baptist more than one time because it's his cousin. John the Baptist would have been about six months older than Jesus, and Jesus would have seen John the Baptist all growing up. He would have seen him. He would have talked to him. He would have known him. He would have been at the family reunion. They would have played dominoes. He would have known his cousin. But for some reason on this day, this special day, this day in particular, Jesus comes walking up and John looks at Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. Now that would be really crazy if you just walked in the house at the family reunion and your cousin stood up and said, Behold the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. But, but John the Baptist yells this out, and we suppose that this is the first time that he even gets a revelation of who Jesus is, which also gives us, gives us a little bit more information. Miss Tammy, it gives us a little more information that you could be in Jesus' presence. You could go to church all your life. You could be in the vicinity. Heck, you could be related to him and not really know. Are y'all with me today? 
That's why all these people who be at this, getting these Jesus t-shirts and all this stuff, you, when you have a real revelation of Jesus, it, it, it'll change you. It'll do more than change your t-shirt. It'll change who you are. It'll change how you live, how you speak to people, how you love on people. But you cannot have a revelation of the chain breaker and not have chains broken off of you. Okay, so Jesus walks up, John, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus said, baptize me. John says, I'm not worthy to baptize you. I'm not even worthy to tie your sandals. <laughs> what if your little cousin just came up? <laughs> tie, <laughs> tie my shoes. But, but John, John, John the Baptist said, no, I'm not even worthy to tie your sandals. You should baptize me. But, but yet I will do this thing. And he starts to baptize Jesus in, in the middle of the Jordan. And, and, and then something happened. The sky cracks open. It's like God took his hand and just pulled back the veil of the sky. And then he yelled down and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then a dove descended from heaven. Uh, the, it was the Holy Spirit in the shape of a dove and it landed on Jesus and all who were around they saw <laughs> and then right after that the Bible says and the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness where he would be tempted understand something testimony doesn't come without test You're not qualified to speak on it if you haven't been through it. That's why I'm, I, I warn y'all to be careful about the Facebook prophets that y'all following. Everybody's not qualified to have the platform that you have given them in your life. That's just a side note. He went into the wilderness to be tempted. And the, the Bible says that he was tempted by the devil. I'm just going to give you a little bit about the chain breaker. He was tempted by the devil. The devil tempted him in, in, in a couple of different ways, and I don't have time to break that all out, but this is in Luke chapter 4, right before we get to this place. And at every turn, the, 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 Jesus gave the devil the word. Let me help you with something else. If you want the enemy to flee, you're going to have to start with the word. You need, you need word. You need as much word. That's why you can't afford to come to church once every three months. Like you can't afford, you need as much word so that the enemy will flee when, do y'all hear me? The Bible says, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. No, that's not what it says. See, that's why you got to read. It says submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. You got to have submission in your life before the devil will submit to you. Does that make sense? Okay, all right, all right. So, after all that happens, Jesus goes into the temple. After he's already been recognized, after he's already been, uh, see, see, what, man doesn't affirm you, excuse me, man doesn't confirm you, man affirms you. If I call you a pastor, a leader, a teacher, it's because God already did. If I don't call you, it's because I haven't heard God already. I'm affirming what I heard God say to me. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. So, so when Jesus comes into the tabernacle, he doesn't just walk to the front unapproved. Are y'all with me today? He walks to the front after the sky being cracked open and God himself saying this is my beloved son he walks in the tabernacle after John the Baptist one of the most famous preachers on the planet at that time looks at him and says this is the son of God and then Jesus walks into the church but now he got a little swag on him <laughs> he's been through something See, sometimes it's, it's, it's not arrogance it's independence Sometimes it's not arrogance. The thing you see on people is not arrogance. It's just that they've been through some stuff. They came out the other side. They don't even smell like smoke. That changed the way I walk. And I'm sorry if I don't seem as humble as you think I... I'm sorry if I... 
My walk is different. It's because I've been through some stuff. It's not because I haven't been through anything. It's because what I've been through and how I came out. So Jesus came out of all that situation. He goes into the church. He stands up. Now, the Bible says he opens up the book. Now, I need you to understand something. Jesus would have been qualified to stand in the, in the, in the tabernacle because he was a teacher. Now, I want, I want you to hear me right here. He wasn't a teacher because man said he was a teacher. In fact, he never went to cemetery. I mean seminary. He never went to seminary. He never, he never went to Bible school. He was a teacher because of what he knew, not because he, of where he went to school. Okay? Okay? Oh, I'm going to get myself in trouble. You know, you go to sem- seminary for people to teach you how to run a church. But the people in seminary don't run a church. They work in a seminary. Some of y'all will get that later. How you gonna teach me how to do something that you're not doing? Okay, all right. So, so Jesus stands up in the temple because he is a teacher. He is qualified to speak in the, in the temple because he is a teacher. So Jesus does something so significant. This is my first point. Jesus shows up. Say, 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 say shows up. I love that we serve a God who will show up. No matter what your situation is, no matter what your circumstance is, no matter what you've been through, I'm here to tell you that God will show up in your life. I've been through so much. Listen, hear me right here. I've been through hell and high water. And every time I thought it was over, every time I thought I wasn't going to make it, every time I thought I wasn't going to get through, Jesus showed up. I'm not trying to convince you about who Jesus is in your life. I'm just telling you who he's been in my life. Whenever I had trouble, Whenever it got really deep and I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and I got real scared. Sometimes he's not as timely as I want him to be. But my grandma helped me with that. She said, baby, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Jesus will show up. I want you to just take 30 seconds and praise God if you know he will show up. If you seen him show up, I want you to do it for your neighbor. Because they might not have had him show up in their life. We serve a God that will show up. He'll show up. He'll, oh, he'll show up. Jesus shows up to the tabernacle. The Bible says he, 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 he stands up. This is point number two. Say stand up. He stands up. I, 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 I want to serve a God who stands for something. That's why I'm glad that God is just not the universe. I've been dealing with this, but I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep God is just not, you know, Confucius, Buddha. God stands for something. He said, I came to deliver some people. I came to speak to the poor and the captive and the blind. I came to bring people out. I'm not just a, oh, hear me right here. You don't serve a God who just wants you to be lucky. I want you to look in a horoscope, a horror, a horoscope. Read the That's horrible. I wouldn't look in a... You serve a God who stands for something. Your God wants you to be... He said, I would that you would prosper as your soul prosper. Your God stands for something. Listen right here. I don't want to serve a God who doesn't stand for something. And if God stands for something, then I'm going to stand for what he stands for. Hear me right here. I'm going to stand for social, social justice because God stands for social justice. Like Martin Luther King said, injustice to anybody, anywhere. Oh, man, y'all know. You, you got to be, you got to stand for the same things that Jesus stood for. We serve a stand-up God, and we need to be a stand-up church. If somebody is in trouble, if somebody don't, if somebody need help, it is your job. You can't just keep walking by homeless people and say you changed in your spirit. That's not how it works. You can't just keep walking by the destitute and say you changed in your spirit. That's not how. Jesus is a stand-up God. He stands up for some things. And I love this. He stood up in the temple. Y'all going to get me excited too early. And I only got a few minutes left. He stood up in the temple. 
And the Bible says he called out for a particular scripture. He, he called out in the Bible. He says, give me, give me this particular scripture out of Isaiah. Some of y'all know it's Isaiah chapter 61. He said, give me this particular scripture. Now, the truth is, what would have happened is Jesus would have been like a novice teacher. And there would have been a, 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 an elder that sat in the middle. And Jesus would have stood over here, you know, on the podium over here. You know, like, like not, not the real preacher podium. The one that make you stand behind when you... Elder, am I... I'm qualified to teach the word, but not from... I'm, I'm qualified to teach the word, but not from your pulpit. Wait, let me help, man. Y'all better send y'all kids to Children's Church. <laughs> My genitalia disqualifies me to preach the word of God? Are you crazy? I got to stand behind this little thing because I got different body parts than you do? Are you out your mind? The word, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. <laughs> Giving all honor to God, I just like to... They would have put Jesus over here in this little thing. He's over here preaching from this, <laughs> this little podium. Some of y'all, some of y'all not churchy enough, so y'all don't know what I'm talking about. It's okay. This your first church. I'm hey amen. I'm you in the right place. You ain't missing nothing. Oh, I mean uh so so Jesus is preaching from this little podium over here. And he asked for the scripture. Now, you're not, you, you, don't, you don't usually ask for the scripture. The elder will tell you what scripture to read. The Bible says that Jesus asked for the scripture. And then he turned to the place in Isaiah. And he, said, he turned to the place that, and he looked up and he said, The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, there's some theological sort of mischief happening right here. Because the Bible said he found the place. It never said he read the book. He found the place where it was. And he spoke out what was already on the inside. Do you understand who I am? I am walking eschatology. I don't got to read from your... He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. If you're looking for the next point, it's Jesus will speak up. Every time I've been in trouble, every time I've been down, every time I felt like I didn't have anybody on my side, Jesus spoke up for me. Oh, man. Every time I felt like I, I needed some justice or I needed a friend or I needed somebody just to be on my side for a little bit, Jesus spoke up for me. Some of y'all are defending yourself. You don't have to defend yourself, baby. Jesus will speak for you. I'm not going to keep going back for you. I'm going to let the Lord, if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, victory victory shall be mine. Y'all might have to let JJ get on that argument over here. <laughs> oh. He said, if I hold my peace and, and let the Lord fight my battles, then victory will be mine. Jesus will speak up. Somebody say, speak up, Jesus. And then he starts, to, he starts to speak about people that the church has forgotten about. The poor sick the lame listen if we have all these lights but we don't care about the lame we're in trouble if we have all these speakers but we don't care about the sick we're in trouble does that does that make sense if we can't make a hospital visit if you in here like this is how I fight my battles and you can't visit nobody in the hospital, you're missing what Jesus came for. He, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he had anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He says, he says, he says, he says, I, I, I'm, I'm here to lift people up. I'm here to live. We talked about this before. That's why, that's why you, you keep seeing Jesus as a man, but you're missing it. 
If you only see him as a man, you're going to miss it. Because if he's a man, he can't lift. The only way I can lift you up is if I'm higher than you. We used to sing a little song in children's church that said, Lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him up for the world to see. He said, If I be lifted up from the earth, I will. If you ain't lifted, you can't be drawn. If, you, if you're not lifting, you can't be drawn. You keep going to a well that, uh, hear me right here. You got you to gotta put in on it if you want to get out of it. <laughs> he said, if I be lifted, then I'll draw. We, we only want to be lifted ourselves. But we don't want to do any lifting. It's our responsibility to lift Jesus higher. Okay, are y'all with me? Uh, is this good? Are y'all, are y'all getting this? Does this make sense? The Bible says he starts to lift these people up. He starts to lift these people up. He starts to lift these people up. And then, and then something happens. The Bible says that he closed the book. I want to help you right here. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you right here. It, it, he closed the book. Everything that people keep trying to put on you, keep trying to throw on you to say what you're not and what you can't accomplish. This, listen, the book is closed, baby. I don't know why you did The book is closed. Whatever God said about me is true about me. It doesn't matter what you, it doesn't matter how you feel about it. Whatever God said is the truth. The Bible says, let, let God be the truth and every man be a liar. Some of y'all are still worried about your future, but the book's closed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of y'all are still worried about what you're going to do, what you're going to have, what you're going to be. But God said, I already finished that. The book's... He st- the Bible says he stood at the beginning and saw the end. He already knows you're going to be blessed. He already knows you're going to be prosperous. He already has it. He set it up before the foundations of the world. The world... I set you up to be blessed. Stop worrying about the next chapter. God is already closed. Are y'all with me? Then he does something so significant. He goes, Jamon, to the elder seat. (laughs) And he sits down. He goes to the elder seat. And he sits down. Now we get this because the Bible says that the eyes of everyone in the synagogue was on him. Wait, Elder Bernita, they not gonna have a problem with you when you're reading from this little podium. But when you sit in your seat. Wait, 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 wait. They're not gonna have an issue with you when you're behind a little podium. But when you go sit in the place that God has for you, when you sit in the seat that God has for you, when you sit, the Bible says, I prepared a place. That, that's not just in heaven. He prepared a place in your future, in your destiny. I prepared a place for you. You know how I know he prepared a place for me, not in, in, in my future, but in, uh, excuse me, not in, in, in heaven, but in my destiny? Because the Bible says that he prepares a table before me in the presence some of y'all ain't shouting because y'all ain't got no enemies but that's okay I just want to be in the right place so when my enemies are in their right place I've been working on my pinky He prepares the table before me in the presence of my. So Jesus sits down in this place in the seat where the elders should sit. Again, no, no man qualifications. Now I've been in the seminary. Now I do, he sits down in this seat. And then he looks at everybody in the crowd and he said, this scripture has been fulfilled. Wait, wait. What y'all been praying for? 
Y'all been begging for it. What y'all been killing little innocent lambs and animals for all the ceremony that y'all been doing. Yeah, pay, pay attention, baby. Uh, I'm just going to take my seat right here. I'm going to sit down and in my seat. Wait, you missed something. That, that, uh, hear me right here. You missed something. That the God who can stand in this place can sit in this place. Okay, okay. You're clapping. You don't know why. I'm going to help you right here. <laughs> see, see, see. We want the God who stands. We want the God who screams and yells like I'm doing right now. We love it. Yeah, Jesus, he's standing. But real authority. See, wait, 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 wait. The reason you love the God that stands is because that's what you, you, you want to stand and yell and scream. Tie three ropes around each other and go into the church and tear everything up. And there is a season for that. Not in this church, but in some places. You come in here, we got security. Chauncey, no, I'm just fucking relax over there. Don't play with us. Michael James, where Michael James? Boy, y'all better relax. And I mean, y'all negating the fact that I'm up here, so. Okay, anyway, so. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Don't even come over on this side. You're going to meet Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Okay. Come back, y'all. I'm, I'm almost finished. Okay. <laughs> we love the God who's, who, who, who makes a commotion. But the real God sits to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. The real God sits. See, 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 see. We all want the God of power. But we don't want the God of authority. The real chain breaker has authority. The real chain breaker, see, that we named this, uh, this chain breaker, and we're we going to do some more with that and we'll get into it. But the real chain breaker, when, when, you, when you really serve the chain breaker, the chains just fall off. When you really serve the chain, the, the God who is in authority over your life. See, 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 the God... Oh, hear me right here. If I can get up here and shout y'all and we can clap and sing and run around this church, but at the end of the day, when God say, you didn't have to do that. You know better. Go tell her you're sorry. That's the chain breaker. Wait, 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 wait. We, we, want, we want the God to say, yes, Jesus, love me. Yes, Jesus. Hey, don't go back and forth. Just leave it. It's okay. I'll take care of it. That's the chain breaker. Wait, 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 wait. We, we, we want the God to do them, do them, do them, do them, Man, y'all help me right here. What's this thing? That <laughs> Love thy neighbor. That's the chain breaker. Stop calling him. I want to leave church changed. Some of us come to church dry, leave church wet, but not changed. If I sweat, but I don't change, what use is it? If we shout, but I don't change. Well, I'm messing with that cameraman right now. He like. (laughs) 
I just caught him right there. <laughs> See, the chain breaker is here to bring change in your life. You don't serve a Jesus who's powerful enough to change you? You mean you still smoke? What's all those Sundays for? <laughs> you mean you still in sin? What's all those Sundays for? 40 years, 50 years. <laughs> no, I want to serve the God of authority. See, 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 in Matthew 8, 20, uh, excuse me, Matthew 28, 18, this is it, I'm done. Matthew 28, 18. Jesus is talking to the disciples. And this is not the, 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 the fleshly Jesus. This is the resurrected Jesus. The resurrected king. And he says something like this. He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Now I give it unto you. Now go ye therefore and teach all nations. He said, all the authority. Wait a minute. Did he say power? No, he told them later on, <coughs> excuse me, when the Holy Spirit comes, you shall receive power. He said, yeah, the power, you're going to have power to walk right, power to talk right, power to live right. But he said this, he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. See, 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 authority is, has to do with where you sit. You know, some of y'all arguing on levels that you're not on. You should be sitting in heavenly places. You sit in a different, you have authority. You de- why, why are we arguing? You know what, boo-boo, do what you was going to do. I, I love you. God bless you. May the Lord watch between me and thee. <laughs> God said all authority, authority has to do with your seat. Listen, where is Jesus seated in your life? I talk about this all the time. Sometimes, you, you know, people wear the crosses, little crucifix, whatever it is. It's got Jesus on it. Not a picture of Jesus. He's still hanging on the cross. I, I always want to come up, go up to people and say, you know what? He's not on that thing no more, right? He got up with all power and authority in his hand. But, but some of y'all, this is your Christian life. It's a crucifix. Because you put Jesus where you want him to be when you want him to be. When you, it's time for church, you put it on your neck and you take it to church. As soon as you get on I-35. Y'all can't get 10 minutes away from the church. Y'all arguing already. You took it. But no, the same Jesus that was there, this is how I fight my battles. Got to be in your car. You got to be on I-35. He got to be at your house. He got to be, listen. He got to be at 1 a.m. when you're getting that feeling. That's when you need a church song. Not on Sunday. You need a church song when you... This is how I fight my... Are y'all with me? Y'all understand what I'm... Y'all got y'all babies in here. I'm trying to... Where is Jesus seated in your life? Where is Jesus? Listen, because if if he can stand up in your life, then he should be able to sit down in your life. Sit down in authority. Sit down. You should be convicted. Hear me right here. If there is no conviction, listen, if there is no conviction, then you don't have Jesus in your heart. You can just do whatever, whenever, and not feel no kind of way about it. You need to repent. But the chain breaker, this is, this is how the chain breaker works. You want to see chains broken in your life? Give him authority. Give him a place. Give him a place to sit. Give him a place. Boy, I'm going I'm 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 to keep this. I'm going to teach this next week. Lord, have mercy. Can he sit on you? Can he sit in you? Does he have authority in your life? He's not the chain breaker until he has authority in your life. 
Jesus sat down in that seat and he said this, what you've been waiting for, I'm it. Let me in. What you've been praying for and begging for and killing goats and lambs for, I'm it. And I see Jesus in that synagogue just like I see him right here. Saying, let me in. Let me in. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. If you're poor in spirit, the spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus so he can break the yoke off you. But you got to let him have authority in your life. Everything you're going through, everything you're crying about, everything you're worrying about, give it to Jesus. The chain break, he's already fixed it. He's already done it. He's already healed it. Now, th this is what he's waiting for. You understand something? Because, because when Adam was created, God gave Adam all authority on heaven and earth. So now, Jesus cannot impede on your authority. He has to be let in. He has to be let in to your heart to your life, to your mind. I know it's hard. To, you're trying to, it's so much stuff coming at you a million different ways, but what I'm telling you right now is if you trust Jesus, if you try Jesus, if you give him authority in your life, then he'll break the chains. Trust him. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God. We give you glory and honor. We believe you to be a chain breaker. Lord, I'm praying for each and every person God, that's here today, God, that came. They feel trapped. They feel lost, God. So, some people came here and they're blessed and they, they enjoyed it and they clapped and, they, 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 and, and, and that's fine. But there's some people who came here and they, they're broken, Jesus. They don't know what to do, God. They feel in, that they're in bondage, bondage to, to a system, bondage to a financial situation. Uh, Lord, maybe bondage to a person, God. But I thank you, God, because you are the chain breaker and you came here just for that person, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hundreds of people in the room, but you came for one person. Thank you, God, for being a chain breaker. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to pray with you today. And you say, Pastor Dante, I've said this prayer. What, what I'm saying is if you mean it with your heart, I believe the chain breaker. If you let him in, I believe the chain breaker will show up, stand up, speak up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And then sit down in your life. That's you today. Let him in. We say a simple prayer. I would that you would say it with us. And we believe that in the Romans model that if you accept, believe, and confess that Jesus will come into your heart and the chains will start breaking. The chains will start breaking in your life. That can start today. It's a simple prayer. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today... I accept you as my Lord and Savior. You can sit here. You can sit here, Lord. Do it in me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you said that prayer for the first time or you believed it for the first time, I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I want you to raise your hand as high as you can raise it. One, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. It doesn't matter how they feel about you. The only thing that matters is your relationship with God. Two, you don't even have to wait. You can raise your hand right now. Three, go ahead and raise your hand. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming to pray with you. If it's you, if it's you, if it's you, somebody's coming to pray with you. And the saints of God are standing up like Jesus stood up and rejoicing in this place. And rejoicing in this place. And rejoicing in this. They're clapping for you. They're clapping for you. The Bible says that there is rejoicing in the presence of angels every time one shows up. We give you glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.